it's good to understand where business evolution or economics started from for an SME to understand why, why uh, they need uh, partners like a UNICAF or universities or academia at large to be able to succeed in business. If you go back in times, you realize that human activity or economic activity started off in the Stone Age, uh, Bronze Age, Iron Age, and people were making small tools for businesses. Thereafter, in the 16th century, between the 16th century and the 17th century, we saw actually uh, these small um, uh, kind of economic activities turning into industries, whereby industries were using the resources, both agro-based and also uh, mineral-based, to be able to manufacture the tools, equipment, and the food that we do utilize every day and businesses evolved around the industries. Um, later on in the 20th century, that's when we see the evolution from an industrial age to the information age. Now the information age came in three tiers, in the 20th, 20th century and in the 21st century. In the 20th century, we saw a lot to do with uh, the primary um, age, which mainly was um, uh, prints, newspaper prints, say for example, radio, television, and probably in some countries you could have something called town halls, whereby people come together to share information. That gradually transited into the secondary age, where we saw uh, internet, satellite, TVs, and uh, mobile phones. And that became quite active also to kind of uh, complement uh, the newspapers, radio, televisions and the town halls. Uh, today in the 21st century, and this is the most important element, really, um, regarding uh, the working together of SMEs and academia, is we see the tertiary age, the information age. And that tertiary age, uh, what it does, it tries to make, to have an interconnectivity between the primary and the secondary um, uh, information age. Uh, ages. In this, now when you see that interconnectivity coming together, it brings a lot, a lot of information to our platforms. Uh, the information comes in forms of uh, print, uh, online, and uh, if we were to say, say for example, that uh, we had to count the number of kilometers uh, of number of information in textbooks alone, but also if you put it in uh, lines of uh, sentences, of uh, the amount of information available in audio, video, uh, print, and also in databases, where in whatever form it is stored, you realize there's a lot of information we cannot actually uh, be able to put a value to it. Now, academia comes in to help uh, small businesses to really try to put this information together, pick out what is relevant for them, and be able to work together to see that uh, these uh, industries or even uh, other businesses thrive throughout uh, time, irrespective of the challenges that are available. Um, as we proceed, uh, today's presentation, we will try to look into a little bit about the theory regarding the uh, SMEs and national development. And why this is important is that uh, SMEs and, um, and national development work hand in hand. They cannot work in isolation. The governments, governments in whatever country, let it be Uganda, they will always have to rely on businesses to, to push their agenda. In the meantime also, SMEs have to align themselves to the national development goals of a specific country or region or even market they're targeting in order for them to thrive well. So that's why we need to hint on uh, the national development of a particular environment we're talking about. Thereafter, we'll look into the access to finance, contribution to national development, and uh, I'll conclude. Thereafter, we shall have a, a question and answer session. So um, in a definition of SMEs, uh, when we see SME uh, in Uganda, they have actually looked at it from a different perspective. They have looked at micro, small, medium enterprises, not only small and medium. Now, small 
looks at um, five to 49 uh, employees, thereabouts, whilst the, my, the waste, the micro looks at about four employees, and the medium looks at about 50 to 100 employees. Also, the grouping is also based on uh, the kind of uh, revenue they make in, in a year, and it goes on increasing as you migrate from uh, micro to, to medium enterprises. Um, on the part of national development, um, three key aspects are put into consideration. One of them is the, the gross domestic product. Then thereafter, we look at the gross domestic product per person. And that is, uh, uh, by simple definition, it is, um, it is the division of uh, the GDP and uh, again, uh, uh, with, uh, with, the, with the population of the country. However, what GDP does is that it, it, it assumes that uh, everyone is earning the same money or everyone is contributing the same to the, to the basket of, uh, of the goods and the products that, uh, that a country is producing. But to see the human development itself, uh, new metrics is have come up and we have the human development index, which looks at uh, the quality of living, social services, which are things like security, Medicare, and education. And also not there is education in this kind of uh, a definition, as it is quite important to transit into the work world if you're going to contribute to the economy. Education is key. Um, SMEs in East Africa, I'll try to be brief here and we'll go into the, uh, so that we can be able to have enough time for the, for the main topic, which is access to finance. But uh, in East Africa, you realize that um, uh, SME started way back when, uh, when, um, when the rupee was introduced to East Africa, and that's early in the 20th century. And by independence, we had started seeing industries coming up, and these have grown massively. But irrespective of the growth of industries, the SMEs have still played a key role in the countries of East Africa. That is Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi. And I think soon we shall be joined by South Sudan and the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, in Uganda, particularly, we see that uh, we have Uganda's economy depending, to, uh, depending on about 70% uh, uh, SMEs. 70% of the, of, uh, of the business, sorry, uh, is, uh, contributed, is contributed by the SMEs. But however, their contribution to GDP is 20%. So the number of SMEs or businesses, we find that as far as number of businesses are concerned, we have about 70% as SMEs but their contribution is so minimal to the, to the GDP of the country. And um, this we see mainly in the uh, agricultural sector, agro-processing, but also we see um, some few who are getting into mineral beneficiation. Uh, the SMEs, in particular in Uganda, start as family, -based, uh, family businesses, and thereafter, they transit getting some friends, partners to work together, and if they can progress further, they can access some external financing beyond family and friends. However, one of the characteristics is that uh, most of them live a very short life, but over time we are seeing that at least what we used to say, they don't go beyond their first uh, anniversary, they are actually proceeding on uh, to get to the second and third, depending on how they persevere and also the partners persevere through the different challenges. Um, the, when we look at Uganda's national development, because we need to put this into the context of Uganda, uh, Uganda looks at national development uh, according to the vision 2040. This vision is a vision by the government of Uganda, and it has uh, been, uh, it's a 30 year period uh, vision, which is broken down in five year plans. I will not go through the, through the details, but I hope with the presentation, you can always go back and look into these details. But the key areas of growth, we see the range from uh, oil and gas, tourism, ICT, which is key also for this kind of uh, uh, lecture we're having today. And noting that even today we are depending on ICT. 
um, then there are abundant labor force, geographical locations, and many others. Now, past performance of the Vision 2040, uh, that was in about uh, from 2010 to uh, the first one was, the first national development plan was uh, a five-year plan starting from uh, 2010. And a number of measures have been looked at, looking at uh, the, the training. We see that actually there is a clear development, uh, there is clear development from 2010 to 2019. If you look at the aspects that the Vision 2040 is looking at, and uh, mentioned some of them there, um, unless someone wants to, would like me to go through them later, we may have to go through them. But for the purpose of getting to the to the topic itself, I'll try to to skip this for future. Um, then I go to National Development Plan Three, which is actually the one we are running today. Um, so any SME that is in the Ugandan market today, it is always good to look at the National Development Plan 3. It's a five-year plan that is uh, ranging from uh, this year to the next five years. And the key thing is that uh, the government is looking at is uh, increased household incomes, improved quality of life, and the theme is uh, sustainable industrialization or inclusive growth, employment, and wealth. Now, if I'm an SME, one thing I realize here is the word, the key word is uh, industrialization. So I need to factor or to try to manage my business model in a manner that, that uh, reflects or communicates to the development plan of the country, because most of the resources are likely to go towards that uh, direction. And uh, the objectives, therefore, need to be looked at as an SME to be able to align yourself well. And why is it very important to align? Is that uh, today we're looking at access to finance. Access to finance means that you have a sustainable business. It means that your business is a going concern. And in doing so, it aligns well with the national development goals. Whatever country you may be, it may be Uganda, it may be in Europe, it may be in the USA, or any part of Africa or South America. You align yourself with the government development goals such that you can be able to sustain the business through the times. But when we talk about industrialization, it's not that everyone goes into industries. Also, industries depend on services. So that's also key to note, that you can start an SME, which is service-oriented. But at least it's aligned to the development goals of the country. Now, to the topic of today, which is access to finance, one of the things we've looked at are the resources or the sources of finance. Uh, what happens is that uh, to start up a business, you think how much resource do I have? Resources come in so many ways. Some of them may be capital-based, it may be labor-based, or it can be land, say for example, or even knowledge itself is a resource. However, all that said, if you need to have the capital or the finance to start the business. And one of the things that uh, people look at, or SMEs should look at, or where, where they find the easiest sources of uh, finance, one of them is going to be promoters' personal savings. That's quite key. You save a lot of time and a lot of money, and, then, and thereafter you realize that uh, if you don't get the good guidance into the business, or you don't have a very good business model, it all goes to waste. So it's quite important to note that uh, Yes, even if you're depending on personal savings, you need to get the good guidance, you need to get a good plan to move ahead into the business. The other source is retained earnings. Now retained earnings are the, is the money that we do make and we come back into the business. Um, it's a good source of financing, it's cheap because it's generated within the business itself. And uh, whoever's going to look at your business model or financial model, we we'll look at it and say, okay, this business can be able to earn money and recoup again for growth. Now that gives you a platform for future uh, sources of financing, including our friends or even going to financial institutions or markets that uh, do trading capital, like capital markets. Supply credit is another source that we look at in our SMEs. And uh, that is uh, a resource 
that comes from your suppliers. Typically, when we are going to buy goods and services to support our businesses, we shall go to suppliers. In most cases, they will ask for cash. But sometimes you may not have that cash. And uh, thereafter, you may need to get uh, some source of financing. The suppliers can extend that credit to you if they have some sources. And this is quite particular when you're talking about big industries or big businesses that pick tech services from SMEs. Sometimes they extend credit to them so that they grow their businesses, or even they can support them or, add, or direct them where how to manage their finances in a way. Um, insurance is another source. In Uganda, it's not that much used, but actually what it does is that, uh, let's say for example, a supplier doesn't trust you with, uh, with, uh, with their resources. They may be forced to take out an insurance, what you call supply insurance, and can help you to, to access capital and therefore be able to do your business. And all this goes with knowledge. Knowledge is gotten in institutions like uh, Unicaf or any other university and uh, other professional bodies that deal in uh, financial services. Uh, collective resources, those are SAPOs and the investment clubs. Right here, we may talk about just the source itself, but a lot of work goes behind making a SAPO and an investment club. There is need to know, to understand the constitution that guides you as, a, as friends or colleagues who want to get, to get together in a SAPO or investment club. And how you're going to manage the club so that it can be able to, to achieve its objectives. That work requires uh, some, either in, 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 the, in the circle itself, you have some people who are knowledgeable, but if you don't have this knowledge, you come to academia or even uh, professional services, which now is also provided by academia to be able to do your business well, and uh, to structure it well, to get the collective resources, which you can again invest in other businesses. And even when you're talking about circles and investment clubs, it's not a matter of uh, simply, um, it's not a matter of simply, simply uh, giving the money there. There are contracts, there are agreements, there are some studies that need to be taken, analysis to see that actually the business just extending the money to is viable and is sustainable, such that your money can come back into the circle with our returns. Um, apart from those sources, now we go to the most structured ones, which are mainly financial institutions. These are commercial banks, uh, export import banks, uh, then industrial uh, cooperative banks. These banks will require you to prepare yourself as a business if you're going to be successful in getting money from them. That kind of guidance be required to partner with academia or even professional services to be able to access these uh, sources of finance. Venture capitalists, these are, we could say these are like uh, uh, business people who are looking out for ideas to finance. And again, to present your business plan to them, you require very good guidance because they expect that they're sending their money to people who understand the business and people who are actually going to put the money to good use and be able to make a return. So guidance is required there, and uh, therefore it calls for a lot of support from uh, professional services like academia. And why I'm insisting academia here is that uh, SMEs, especially in our environment, normally do not understand why they have to come to academia or even professional services. But this is the key bridge that is required for them to organize themselves to be able to uh, grow their businesses. So that's why really I'm having an insistence on academia and uh, the professional services. Um, capital markets also play a big role. A lot of, a lot of um, as, a, as, a, as an SME is going into, is transiting into, into a large industry, it may require to bring in some partners on board. And, uh, in Uganda and other markets, one of the accesses is uh, the capital markets. Now, a lot of groundwork has to be made to be able to come up with a prospectus that is, being, that is good enough to attract investors into the business. Again, we 
require academia there, we require professional services. Then uh, the other source which I have actually highlighted in red is quite common in Uganda. It is informal, unstructured, and unregulated. Those are the money lenders. But this really is a source that again is not very, very sustainable. And uh, if it's not regulated, you're putting a business at risk. So if you're looking at growth, this is not really the kind of uh, market that you really want to look into to go for your financing. Um, worldwide, when we get to SMEs, one of the things we've uh, I've tried to put together is to see how actually SMEs are looking at uh, where they're getting their money from. And um, what we see is that uh, actually they're getting it from internal funds. A uh, majority of it for both the capital expenditure, that is buying of uh, assets like uh, equipment, land, and buildings. But also even when we talk about working capital to finance their, their, their cash flows, we realize that actually they're dependent much on internal funds. And thereafter, they transit towards uh, banks, and mainly these are the microfinance uh, banks in Uganda, and some commercial banks will really take up some of uh, the risk over the SMEs. Um, now we realize that the risk, as we go on into more, more sophisticated sources of financing, then there is little room for SMEs to play. But actually, if I were to present the same picture here, for large organizations, you realize that actually they are dependent much more on the financial institutions and the most sophisticated sources of financing. And those can be able to grow wide because, and to grow the business quite wide because they put so, many, uh, so much funds to themselves that they are able to give out. So once we depend on internal funding, the disadvantage is that this can only really take you to a certain level. For you to transit from, say, uh, a business of $10,000, as we've seen SMEs, to get to, say, about $5 million, then you may need to get a little bit more structured into the business. And that is where the uh, resources are required from academia and as well as uh, other professional services, if they're available. But academia is quite a good source because it pulls so many uh, experts on board. Um, this is really advice to, uh, to SMEs to know where they fall and where they don't, where they need to, where they need to, uh, to grow their businesses. Or even if you're making a business plan, you need to look for an enabling environment. In Uganda, it's quite okay now. And we have some responsibilities that government does to, to ensure that our SMEs are supported. One of them is the law and order. If we have law and order, definitely, uh, investors have trust in that environment and therefore they'll be able to support the business. Um, then uh, schemes and policies that enable SMEs to grow or even access financing are quite necessary and definitely government plays a key role, not only in Uganda, but also in other countries. Tax policies are key and tax policies go again with uh, knowledge. There is one thing having the policies, there is one thing having the law, and it's another thing, understanding the law. When it comes to understanding, that is where you go into professional services, academia, to be able to understand what the law means. If you go to, say, for example, uh, in Uganda, that's uh, Uganda Revenue Authority, it has a lot of literature for SMEs, how they manage their taxes, how they are going to grow their businesses, what skills they need. But to be able to interpret that, it is good to understand the people who understand the mandate of, uh, of, uh, of the authority, the policies that govern or that are behind the authority, and also why the authority is being able to disseminate this information to the SMEs and therefore take uh, use of them. And that's why you need to partner as an SME with academia. Uh, financial institutions, Policies and regulations are also quite necessary to have an enabling environment for SMEs. Then uh, we talk about uh, laws on financing. That's uh, mainly secretarization. Secretarization here is about uh, what collateral we put in place. 
to be able to access financing. Whenever you go to a financial institution, it's not it's going to give you money. But to give you money, you have the documentation, but also you will need to have uh, some kind of security or guarantee that you'll be paying back the money. Now, that collateral is governed by certain laws. Uh, in Uganda, I think for the bigger part of, bigger part of the past, you will find that uh, securitization is in what you call fixed assets like land. And movable assets like uh, I have a laptop, I wouldn't be able to use that to access financing. But I think changes are being made to ensure that uh, even movable assets can be able to provide collateral for your business to grow. Uh, default management, that again communicates to the first point of law and order. Um, wherever there are, there are defaulters, the law should be able to handle them very well to ensure that the investors actually are protected. If that system is not in place of default management, uh, or people who actually do not pay up, if there is no clear law and order, or even if the law is not conducive enough, then the riskness of that environment is up. And once it is up, the cost of financing is also escalated. And that definitely denies SMEs the access to that kind of uh, financing. Uh, public debt management, necessary also, because the riskiness of the country is also seen in the way it manages its public debt because that can easily collapse an economy or even thrive an economy, depending on the way it is managed. And the last one is riskiness of the country. Among others, the, uh, the items talked about above all communicate with the riskiness of the country or an, an environment where SMEs are going to play. Now, I would imagine at this, when, when we're still on this slide, I would imagine an SME, someone having about uh, a few thousand dollars, say tens of thousands of dollars, trying to get into the market and needs to appreciate all these facts put together to be able to start the business and be able to thrive. Now, to do that, as an individual, as an SME, it may be very difficult because you need to understand aspects of finance, aspects of law, aspects of business, aspects of economics. Now, that all together is totally a very big talk. And that's when you need professional services like academia to come in and be able to mold you within this vast environment of information. Remember, we talked about information being the key thing today. And how you manage that definitely defines your path in the, in the development goal of your, of, your, of your company or SME, but also for the country at large. Um, there, at farm level, we talked about uh, the government level, and now at farm level, that is the business itself, or even the promoters of the business, again, you also have some responsibilities. We cannot always put it to the government that we do not have access to finance. But as individuals, as companies, we require actually some key aspects to put into place to be able to prepare us to access financing as an SME. Um, I'll go through them uh, shortly. Uh, one of them is uh, legal status of the company. That's quite key, because if you don't have a legal status as a company, definitely you cannot access financing. That requires a lot of paperwork, a lot of uh, organization that has to be placed, that has to be in place where you need some consultancy. And universities have that pool, uh, academia has a pool to help you out. Um, access to resources, ideas, information, the finance itself, and all these other resources. It's quite, it's quite necessary that you have access to them. If you don't have access, actually, then you can't be able to try. Again, guidance is required at that point. Um, then some business and financial model, you should be able to communicate your plan to people who are going to give you money. Again, that you need to put it in a language they understand. Some of them are professionals. You may not be a professional, but you have the resources, capital resources. Therefore, you need to bring the gap with other professionals to be able to make it that way. Uh, integrity is quite key. Uh, if a business doesn't have integrity, then there is no problem. And integrity is communicated along the entire business, right from the promoters of the business, to the employees, to the suppliers, 
to the customers they engage with, because all those people, all stakeholders, for the business, for the SME, create a risk, or they create an opportunity. Now, integrity, lack of integrity is a risk. So at whatever level it comes, it actually threatens your business. So we need to really ensure, as an SME, that integrity is appreciated at all levels of dealings and in all contracts or engagements we make uh, the business. A going concern, that's quite key, whereby you communicate that this business is sustainable and can really pass beyond the first anniversary, second, third, fourth, go on, even up to 20, 30 years. Then uh, financial management, also very necessary um, for a business to, to thrive. That actually talks to skills, as again, we've been communicating, the instance of academia to help you to manage your finances. It's not about this, the proper bookkeeping, but you need manuals, you need uh, guidance. You need to understand the resources that are available in the market and the new technologies and the new changes in laws. Accounting is governed by standards. Who is going to interpret this for you to be able to make proper uh, accounting for your future growth? Uh, compliance and uh, a level playing field. Engaging in, um, in, a, in illicit trade may not be the best idea as an SME who is looking to access financing because it will present a risk to the promoters or any other financial you're looking out for. Uh, the track record of the promoters, again, that's a context to the integrity and their knowledge of the business. Um, then uh, reliable, constructive business relationships, quite necessary. As we say that SMEs are necessary in the market, also large enterprises are necessary, we always need to remember that even large enterprises have a vast knowledge they can help. Uh, for the company I'm working for, like uh, Roofing Group, is such a big company um, in Uganda. It has been in, around for over 25 years in the same business. So if you have a small business, like uh, you are going to start up your hardware shop after school, you may think probably they have some resources to help me go through that uh, circle of becoming a dealer. And how do I thrive in the market? So it's good to talk to them. But remember, they also talk to academia. So it's another way of linking the gaps. Industry, academia, small businesses, large industries, all together can deliver a very good uh, platform for business success and uh, national development. And that's quite key in this current environment of uh, COVID, where we see that a lot of things are coming in. There is no clear information what is happening. Big companies are investing large, uh, much more into getting the most reliable sources of finance, I mean, the most reliable sources of information, liaising with academia and other enterprises also, and uh, professionals. So it's good to have that good relationship with them and uh, be able to access financing where necessary. Branding, also necessary. I won't go through the whole list, but at least it's clear the kind of uh, direction we are trying to uh, persuade the really the interconnectivity between uh, information, academia, SMEs, and also probably large industries. Um, innovations to tap into other resources. Um, briefly, we've talked about what is required, the sources of financing, and uh, the role of government, and the alignment of the SME to the, the alignment of the SME to the national development goals. But all that we've communicated, I wouldn't be able to actually communicate all that in this kind of presentation, it's really tight. And um, what I've done is try to put together sources where you can get more information, but it's not a matter of getting the information, interpreting it is quite important, and that's where professional services come in. So these sources are there, uh, and I hope the presentation will be shared, and probably people can go through them. <coughs> Again, more sources of information in Uganda are quite um, available by the ministries, uh, Enterprise Uganda, Uganda Development Corporation, and so many other authorities and support centers that have been put in place. Now, each country really has this kind of uh, platforms to communicate information to SMEs to help them grow their businesses. Um, Moment, please. Okay. 
sorry, sorry about that. Okay, sorry about that. Um, contribution to the next slide is about our contribution to national development. Uh, SMEs really have a lot of contribution to do to national development. And it is important to know your role as an SME. It is important to know your role as an SME in the country because that's actually what is going to help you to get uh, support from government, to get support from other platforms that have been put in place, like, uh, like uh, financial institutions and also academia that can be able to support your business since you know really what you're doing for the country. It's not to say that uh, you're doing this for yourself, you're actually doing it for a wider platform of people. And um, going through them, we have, uh, uh, it's a pool for national innovation and entrepreneurship uh, because we do know really SMEs, people come up with different ideas in their small baskets or small platforms, but actually these ideas can grow into big, big plans. If we look at the big enterprises today, they started as a small business. Um, that um, an idea that someone came up to assist either an individual or a, group, a small group of people, and they've grown into multinationals. So countries, academia, are also interested in SMEs, such that they can get some information from them. So they will always welcome you to be able to partner with them as they get information from you or kind of uh, some other resources for research or even uh, uh, helping out on national development they'll be able to disseminate information for you to access the resources you need, especially financing. Employment is key uh, for SMEs. They contribute, and uh, Uganda, we've mentioned that actually, they may be employed about 70% uh, of the population in Uganda. Um, gross domestic product is a key, con uh, they contribute a portion of that. In Uganda, it's about 20%, as we mentioned, but that can grow depending on the number of SMEs that are there and uh, how successful they are in business. Um, they provide input for manufacturing sector. Remember that uh, we say that uh, we have the big enterprises and uh, the SMEs. The SMEs really support in providing inputs. Say for example, a big company, and I always go back to my company because I listen to it very well. Uh, Roofing Group, say for example, needs special. We'll go to the SME to support us on session or printing work or something of that kind of branding, something of that kind. So they really have an input. Now, if you know you have an input, that's a market for you as an SME. And that's why it's necessary to consider. They also provide markets for outputs of various goods and services for large industries or large businesses. In service industry, we know that uh, the big platform providers will be there, but SMEs will be there to disseminate this kind of information or service to the population as well. Uh, they are a basis of industrialization, and then we saw that in also in, uh, in the evolution of uh, business activity or economic activity uh, worldwide from the Stone Age right now to the tertiary information age. That SMEs have been a basis for industrialization, and they also act as a distribution channel to big enterprises. They are a source of tax, and also they offer they offtake industry byproducts for forward processing. Um, that's quite key in uh, countries that look at uh, environmental protection, really. And uh, you kind of think it's getting to that level also, where we look at uh, environmental protection. So where we have byproducts, we do not actually need to send them to a brown field or a green, green field for disposal. What we call in uh, mass waste, uh, solid waste management. Actually, other than economic solid waste management, SMEs can form together, talk to industries, and again, through academia, they can understand what opportunities are there, that uh, they can actually partake what industries call byproducts, process them further to make goods and services which actually are disseminated to the market, to the, to the, to the, to the, to the markets. So, that kind of information is necessary to be able to contribute to the environment, to the environment but as well, ensure the sustainability of business. These byproducts from industries are homogeneous in nature. If we are producing roofing sheets, whatever byproducts we are producing that we may probably not be able to use, they will be homogeneous for as long as we're producing roofing sheets. 
and therefore they can be a source of input for SMEs, and that is necessary. Uh, but that kind of information on how to use that by product, by product, again, academia comes key in research, in uh, sciences, technologies, to be able to partake of that resource that has been created by the large industries. Um, again, I mentioned the avenue of academia research. Um, in conclusion, I would like to say that uh, SMEs need support since their growth directly impacts on the country's GDP and the welfare of the citizens, its citizenry. Now, in that perspective, really, academia comes key. And it is a call for, 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 for SMEs to partake the support services of our SMEs by, I mean, uh, the support services of academia by either enrolling on their programs, uh, which are structured, or looking for consultants that will help them to grow further. Then the key fundamental challenge, challenges include financing, governance, among others. And once these are corrected, then the SME has a platform to, uh, to go further. And academia comes quite key in that area. Um, the nation's countries need to help them grow by expanding their financing from organic retained earnings and personal savings to more sophisticated sources of financing, which are larger and bigger. And that academia plays a key part. Um, lastly, um, with the support of government, large enterprises, and academia, definitely SMEs can progress better.